right? Frogs, nigga. On my wrist, this is frog. All right, we got Brother Smalls on the line. This is genuine pro. Uh, you know, I'm I'm new to this, but I'm true to this. Uh, we got a lot going on in um, the conscious community uh, regarding the Pharaoh, the Louis Farrakhan, uh, Elijah Muhammad, the uh, the response video from. Did you see the response video from uh, Ali Muhammad? Yes, I, I've been bouncing around, getting a lot of different people's perspectives. So now you see what happened because we we're we're speaking on the aftermath of everything so we got to see what's going on we got the full story we got pharaoh's four videos we got a lot of people responding to this you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying this information that pharaoh that pharaoh um presented it was information that was in the conscious community before but it wasn't blown up to this magnitude from my mm -hmm. beliefs now that it's blown up, we have we have Pharaoh sticking to his guns. He's sticking to his guns. He said, "I'm bro, I'm going with this." We have people in the Muslim community, in the Islam community, saying, "This is this is way too far." You call him a pedophile. That's not true. Basically, Ali Muhammad came on us and disputed everything that Pharaoh said. So, from your perspective, you know everybody in this community better than I do. From your perspective, <laughs> from Pharaoh, young Pharaoh Seti, the information that he delivered to the community, <laughs> the freaking, the way he went about it, I thought it was very disrespectful in some of the matters he spoke on and the brother uh, Louis Farrakhan and, 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 and uh, Elijah Muhammad. I thought it was disrespectful. And he's way younger than me. I thought it was disrespectful. The way, just the way about, the way you go about doing it, the way you go well, about speaking it into light. What do you, what's your perspective now that you got the full story and you got to deliberate, you got to sleep on it for a few days, you got to hear everybody's side. What do you think about what's going on and with this, just in generally? Uh, it's, uh, it's, ooh, it's very interesting time. It's a very interesting time. I just, I don't have anything to, to measure this against. The, the things are being done and said. I, I just uh, would never have imagined that we would be at a place where we are right now, mm -hmm. where whatever you believe about any particular person's belief or the leader of that belief, people still love, admire, and follow them. So I, I can get a critique. You know, no one is above critique, but critique can be done in a way that if your goal is to elevate knowledge, information, to find out more, or even to reveal, a revelation is a part of the learning process. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but revelation doesn't have to come with venom. You know, it doesn't have to come with contempt. I mean, not just contempt, the utter contempt. Mm -hmm. You know, the language, the la it's, again, it's come back to, it's the language. Because mm -hmm. you can critique anyone about anything, but if the way you truth to critique is so defiling and so debasing. So we're already stepping away from the information. Right now, this look, look how you're going at it. Mm -hmm. You're going at it like, you know, you brought it just down to the base level. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, 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 so why, why do we have to roll around in the gutter to communicate with each other? So so that that part of it is, is just a little, and then we're talking about people, these are men it's, it's only been men, interestingly enough. Mm -hmm. I'm glad some of our female elders' names are not ever a part of this. It, 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 again, it's men, and it's 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 testosterone again. So it's it's us speaking about our leaders and, and what we'll do if you defile our leaders. Mm -hmm. So it, it 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 didn't have to get to this point. And, and um, you know, I've been trying to be one of the voices, you know, in our. Uh, uh, conscious community in this movement about the language, about the, you know, and I, I get a hard way to go about it sometimes. It's it's something so interesting, uh, you know, among us. We associate uh, a way of expression that is vulgar or profane with masculinity. 
And okay. I've seen it. I've seen that connection made in in so many different ways by different people. You know, no, no. Hey, it's just it's just men here talking, and you're when men are talking, we can. You know, it's like yo. So you're a man because you can cleverly or with bravado say F B mother. That's your masculinity. Mm -hmm. You're a man because you can be profane. You know, where did that insanity come from? How can we get track? How can we be excited by someone we are calling? Our leader, our scholar, and it's just using language that that the language is made to offend. And, and you make a, 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 a interactive flow of your expression, to especially when you're speaking about something that's dear to people's heart. So those two don't go hand in hand. So you got that language, then you got the way it's being expressed. Uh, but I did listen to Brother uh, Ali Muhammad's mm -hmm. second. I, I listened to both, his first and his second. His mm -hmm. second is... Very interesting, and, and he he brought forth documents. You know, I'm familiar with Brother Ali Muhammad, and his his presentations are tight. He's mm. you know he's he's a sharp brother, very uh, polished in his yep. presentations and his in his in, in presenting of his case. Uh, he presented a letter that you, you had a chance to see it as well, correct? Yes, I did. He presented a letter that was I I, I was under the impression, and boy, that's a Rough impression beyond it that I've almost heard or seen all of it. I've been to the Schomburg. I've mm -hmm. been through their exhibit. They had a Malcolm X, an extensive Malcolm X exhibit there. His diary, the diary that was in on him when he was when he was killed was on display. So okay. I've read through some of those. I never saw that letter he spoke of. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying it didn't exist or maybe it was in a different. I don't know. I've never seen it. And the thing that um, always raised the flag for me, and I'm and in, I'm in no way. I'm not an expert. I haven't researched it. I'm only dealing from what uh, what he said. And just my natural instinct. So mm -hmm. I'm not seeing this as, as fact. But a tight letter, a tight letter, an email, present day email, but a tight letter, that automatically, you know, you remove the human touch. Now, if that was handwritten, then great. No argument. Because any handwriting analysis can tell you, yep, Malcolm X wrote that. Mm -hmm. But okay, we got a document that is typed. Anybody could type this. Anybody could say X. -word. And we know COINTELPRO, they was on top of sending and misdirecting messages and letters and sending this one against that one. So 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 that part of it maybe, you know, like, okay, hmm, this could be a document that was planted then to do what it's doing. Doing then now is having a double, getting mm -hmm. two bags, two bags for us dollar. Cause confusion then it could be causing confusion now. So that's one part that kind of got my attention. The second part, the contents. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. The contents of that letter. It just said so many things. And before saying another word, before saying another single word, I would like to say going forward, mm -hmm. I would like to, treat, I like to treat this information from a news perspective and speak with it as respectfully as I can, but let none of us forget we're, we're talking about people that are still with us. Yep. The, that's that's our first family, you know. So you know, the sister, uh, they're still walking around here. They're still with us. They still attend. Sister Aliasa was just at uh, Reverend Sharpton's convention, and I had an opportunity to speak with her. Okay. So we have no way. I know. I in no way want to delve into what has got to be. These are intimate thoughts between. Who were their parents? Even though they're historic figures, but come on, guys, let, let, let's let, let's be easy with how we just run through this. We got to speak about this in a respectful way, and I will attempt to do that. The other thing that jumped out about me was, you know, one one first. Let me deal with the good, the beautiful part. If that is an authentic letter, if the letter is authentic, look at that relation. Look at that father son relationship that he felt. He 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 opened himself up in the most vulnerable way any man can. What man speaks about his situation in his bedroom to another man? Sure. In in, in those details, you no. Know, this is the kind of problem I'm having. This is what she told me. This is you know. So for him to feel that close, and it was a close, beautiful relationship before the break. People don't realize that. I know the break takes so much of. The, the information in the news, and it, it's I guess it's worthy of that. But don't forget, they had a bond. And, and, and again, if the letter be accurate, he was stating of his weaknesses. And, and I don't want to go too much further, because if it is a false letter, then what am I doing? 
I'm mm-hmm. further propagating. So I don't want to do that. So with the suspicion, the thing, the beautiful part, if it is authentic, I still try to go that route a little, then that was a close relationship. But the part of it, that, again, that doesn't fit. And that's why it makes me think that it, that it could be a fraudulent letter. The part that doesn't fit, let's go back to what all of us know. If those parts of the story is correct. It, well, let me do this, Brother Pro. I'm going to ask you. Are you familiar with Malcolm X's history that before becoming this honorable minister, he was a street brother? Is, yes. is that not correct? Yeah. That he he indulged in marijuana. Yeah. He, he indulged in, in theft. He actually he was, formed he was a, a gun. He was a criminal. Okay. I mean, I mean, a good he, he criminal. Went, he, went to, he went to jail, right? Right, but he was a go-to guy. Yes. Whatever you needed, Malcolm X would get it for you. Yes. He also had certain dealings with women. Is that not correct? Related to prostitution. I'm only speaking this as historic fact. Okay. The only point I'm trying to make is he was living a street life back then. Is that not correct? That's fact. Now, from my es- estimation, so this is... In, you know, street brothers, brothers that are really in the streets, the thug brother, you know, he might not be holding a job. He might not be in anybody's college. He might not be. But one of the things those brothers do learn and spend time doing is interacting with women in a certain way. As a matter of fact, that's where the whole bad boy image comes from. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's excited by that rough, tough kind of. Street life, because of their level of interaction with women, their aggression with women, mm-hmm. their many instances, their sexual prowess, all of that stuff is part of that street, especially the guys that rise in it. Mm-hmm. Back to what, what our, our, our good brother, uh, Dr. Muhammad said, related mm-hmm. to alpha and beta males. It's the alpha males out there rising in that street element, because it's a tough element yep. to get to the top of that. you got to have something going on all levels, and that usually spills over into your interaction with women. So, okay, so are we to believe Malcolm Rose and all that stuff? And he had either issues with women then. And if he didn't then, why would that carry over? It's in there. So, okay, great. Cleaned up. He became a new. So now, but you know, you forgot the basics about how women act or how, how what their drives are. Mm. So I can't see how you he would just be absolved of this knowledge. And the baby, you know, she throws these tantrums. She tries, I won't let her control me. And that gets at her. And and now I just get cold and withdrawn. And I mean, a guy who would, you know, if you go to another brother from the street, Robert Breck, for those who wrote the, read the book Pimp. Mm-hmm. And he went into details of his, he had to master, have five, six women working for him. He had to say, yo, it was a skull game. You know, it wasn't ever about the physical. I had to mentally be ahead of these women to keep them in that position. Mm-hmm. So all of the thing was that didn't come over. This brother had all that street knowledge, all that revital that much swag becomes a minister and now he don't know the basics about it how to keep his woman happy or let her get all up in his cranium and push all these buttons to now it's just so those two don't fit i think he would if there was a situation and who knows what the intimate aspects of anybody relationship is but if there was a situation i think how he was built prior to becoming a minister he would have wrote that out or figured that out Sure. So the level of frustration. So that's what in the last angle, I'm going to turn it back over to you, brother. The other thing, you know, again, Dr. Dr. Ali, brother Ali made the comment. He said, and, and again, if it's authentic and if Elijah Muhammad had that knowledge and didn't release it, that would demonstrate a great amount of restraint. And, and I would agree with him that, if, especially the way Malcolm was revealing personal matters about Elijah Muhammad's mm-hmm. life. Those are personal matters in his home. So if he had the knowledge of and it didn't, so that would be honorable. Now, the thing that makes me, not say question it, but again, I try to fit things in. Uh, they were, it did get snippy, man. It got snippy. So now whether it came from uh, Elijah for them to go at it, but they, they made, there was some side remarks made about Malcolm's mother and that Malcolm might be suffering the same ailments that his mother succumbed to. Mm. They made little side remarks about his mental capacity. Trying to say that brother done lost his mind, mm. you know. And at him that way. Uh, the, 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 we know about the article, you know, of Malcolm's head in a cartoon figure bouncing down the block and him being called a hypocrite. So, I mean, that's, you know, that, that ain't nicey nice. So, so, so my thing, my thinking, again, if it's authentic, if they really had that, 
it got so bitter at that time. I think somebody would have released it. If only if it went right to um, uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He read it. He put it up and never put it up. That's restraint. That's that's a, a conduct bestowing of a man with, especially when somebody's coming at you. But again, if we go back to historic accounts, everybody was saying Malcolm's letters weren't getting to Elijah Muhammad. Throughout history, several people have verified that. So if, if the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is not checking his mail, reading it, oh, my brother's just going, he's going through such pain. Let me fold this up and never tell anybody about it. Mm -hmm. We know that's not happening. Then someone else read it in the group that's trying to keep the letters from him, in the group that doesn't like Malcolm. Mm -hmm. Now, I got damning information about him. They was, do, they was pulling out all the stops to crush that man because they felt he was trying to crush somebody who was loving and dear to them. So for me, and that's all, I haven't researched anything. All I'm just giving you what my basic feel for from, from the logic, from logic that, right me so yeah, yeah that, that those are just some some of my thoughts and any right. part of that you want to look into further like, what does that do for 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 like the likes of ali muhammad he has no choice to defend his his honor and his religion you know what i'm saying does he have to produce this stuff fact or you know what i'm saying it's like i don't like I, and putting myself in his shoes is like what do I, you know what I mean? Like, how do I go about, is it, is it because young Pharaoh is uh, so young, he doesn't know better? You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. it's like, well, it's, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, it, it could be some of that. And you know what, before I, and you, you mentioned uh, our brother, Dr. Ali Muhammad, probably uh -huh. someone to him. And my, you know, thoughts of, of, of brother young Pharaoh as well. I want to close out one other point that it just came back to mind about that uh -huh. analogy. Uh, when I was making it with, uh, with you know, what Malcolm X, what I think his life experience would have brought to a relationship. I didn't, you know, mention anything at all about, about sister, our sister Betty. Mm -hmm. Now, sister Betty, from historic accounts, I, I met the sister a few times in Harlem. Matter of fact, there was a, a, an event they had in honor of Malcolm X. She was speaking right in front of Harlem State Office Building. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my heart goes out with what she's had to endure since, since losing Malcolm. But, uh, you know, she from all came from a good family now. So she, you know, she was coming from a middle class back family. So this is the, you know, good girl coming from a good. I, her parents were trained. I forgot the feel. I don't know if one was nursing, but again, it, it, she was coming from a good family. What those in the street life would call a square family. A square. So street savvy guy and a good street. I'm sorry, a good sister coming from a good family, when those two come together in a relationship setting, again, the street person or the person with that much more experience and no much more settings related, especially to sexual affairs and just affairs back and forth with, with mentally with women, I think would have given him much more of an edge in that relationship than those letters would reveal. But someone uh, forging that wouldn't know that. Or that's a lot of layers to go into when you're forging. So I think they address some things, but other stuff doesn't fit. That would, again, put question as to whether that document is an authentic document. And again, I've been to the Schomburg, haven't collected it, but, and I've read extensive amounts of things written in his hand. Mm -hmm. He did a lot of writing. Mm -hmm. And if he had, it, it, he, he, another point, he rewrote the, 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 the dictionary, didn't he? Wow, no, I'm not sure. The dictionary, yeah. Wow. From A to Z, you know how long it takes. So this is someone writing is not a problem. But oh, oh, all of a sudden he's got to type four or five pages. It's just too convenient. So you saying? So you saying that letter? You have a feeling that letter wasn't authentic. So as I'm speaking, because I, I just I heard uh, Dr. Ali's presentation late last night before I went to bed, and so all this I'm processing now. Then again, another fit. You know the type, the technology. We forget this is fifty plus years ago. You know, wasn't all this stuff. And, and typing was the upper end of the technology. You know, Prince's a quick typewriter was like, you know, state, state of the art. IBM was on top of the game. So this fits into their package of missive. It could fit very comfortably into their package of misinformation that for then or for now, this could be this could be recently generated stuff. You no, know, well, again, if, if he can authenticate it. Or, 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 you know, I, I'm not even putting this out to him per se, but good brother, and I'm not saying this out to try to take anything. Away. I don't do that back and forth 
All I'm saying, and I'm very impressed with the presentation, just that part. If you can let us know what the uh, uh, authenticity process is for that letter, for that one that you mm -hmm. extensively read through, and it was a little bit hurting. If it is true, it's hurting. You don't want to hear those kind of personal details about somebody's relationship. So, again, if that brother, if you're still able to, I, I would like to hear it. And, and, you know, my, I hope you're going to flash my email. Even if it's something you just want to email to me. It ain't got to be something to be post back. You know, I'm just curious. And I think many others might be. So you might have to do something. That would, that would give me a lot more. Uh, acceptance. If there was a, an authenticity process that in no way can be forged, and maybe some verbal historic accounts. I got a feeling the kind of tension that this story is getting, for better or worse, I think uh, some of his daughters are going to have to come and put some of this stuff to rest if, they, if they're interested. Or maybe they should just stay above the fray. I'm not sure what position that they should take, but just like those are coming forward to who love and care for the Honorable Malcolm Max should, should make sure his name is not defamed. And, and, and yes, he was a man. I'm not saying he was perfect. None of us are. And some of these flaws can be accurately uh, portrayed in some of these documents. That doesn't mean everything is. And before we accept anything, especially about a man that we know gave it all for us, we need to make sure that evidence is as solid as possible and nobody is intentionally or unintentionally being misleading. Can I ask you a question? What do you feel? How do you feel about uh, Ali Muhammad's overall pre presentation of his uh, his defense? What do you think? How do you feel about that? Besides that point, his defense. Yeah. What do you feel the like the overall? The overall. His overall. Oh, his overall defense of the. Uh, going against young Farrell. He has a right to express his personal sentiment. Uh -huh. Now, that his personal sentiment, 